Knoxville versus Knoxville. Today we've got a, uh, a, a cut down crew. We still have three topics. Let's get right to them. First of all, guys, let's just let's go with the uh, you know the teams in your respective cities. Are we going to get our dream scenario? I put it to you, Adam Sparks and Mike Wilson. Are we going to get the dream scenario of five and six Tennessee visiting five and six Vanderbilt, one bowl spot available, rivalry heaven? Well, I think the odds are pretty decent that we could get two five and six teams. I, I do like that for a number of reasons. One is that there's clear-cut bragging rights to the winner. You know, a lot of times this comes up as well. You know, Vanderbilt Vanderbilt beat Tennessee, but, you know, Vanderbilt only won four games or whatever, and Tennessee's headed to whatever bowl. If the fact that they, they'd have the same record, winner goes to a bowl, loser goes home, at least then the bragging rights on Twitter or elsewhere wouldn't be, yeah, we lost, but that sort of thing. So I think that would be good for at least for the rivalry. I don't think both teams will be five and six going into that game. I don't see Tennessee beating Kentucky or Mizzou in the next two weeks. So I think Tennessee is going to go into that game with four wins and not have that bowl game to play for. And at that point, all they have is maybe they'll beat Kyle Shermer for once. That's kind of going to be the only thing on the line for uh, for Tennessee in that game, I think. So I just don't see them, one, stopping Benny Snell, two, running the ball on Kentucky. In the following week, I don't see how they stop Missouri. So I think they'll go in as a four-win team to Vanderbilt. Well, well, then you could have an awful scenario, which is Tennessee with four wins and nothing to play for except for that, and Vanderbilt at four wins, but five and seven would maybe get them into a bowl nice uh, because APR of three APR scores, which would be an awful setup for the last game, but that's possible. Well, no, one, the, no one deserves that game. They'd both be relegated to Conference USA if that's the case. But, yes, it would be interesting if Tennessee's whole thing is spoiling Vandy season, which, of course – Many, many times has been the reverse in that rivalry. All right, let's go Alabama, because we have to talk about Alabama. And it's interesting. They they win 29-0 at LSU, which is not a surprise, I think, to me or a lot of people. And yet I've heard, I guess, more optimism that maybe they could lose a game this year. Maybe, you know, Georgia's starting to round into form. Clemson does look better and better with Trevor Lawrence. Do do you actually think Alabama is more mortal after a 29 nothing win at LSU? No, I, I I didn't buy into LSU before that game being the reason why. Their offense is not that good. Um, that that wasn't going to be competition for Alabama. But you know, Joe, I'm going to go back to to Michigan on this. I think the way that Michigan is buzzsawing teams right now that they might put up the best competition for Alabama. I mean, that that's an NFL caliber defense all over the place at Michigan. Corners are good. Linebackers are good. Defensive line is good. Their offensive line is starting to play better and better. Shea Patterson's taking care of the ball. I think that's a team that might pose a slight bit of competition um, just because of the way they're playing right now. I mean, they're just eviscerating their opponents. Uh, in a similar fashion, Alabama is. Mind you, they don't have the star quarterback that is Tua, but that, that's a team to me that could pose a slight threat come the postseason. Well, you know, I mean, Clemson, let's not forget about Clemson. Clemson's last four games, they have won 240 to 36. Those are Alabama top scores. Now, granted, that was against bad to middle of the road uh, ACC teams, but that's not Clemson's fault. Uh, Clemson could still be a team that it, in a playoff scenario could give Alabama a game. I do like Michigan better because they played better defensively. Uh, Wisconsin, Michigan State, Penn State, those were all really good wins. I, I would like the fan side of me would like Michigan, Alabama, because Michigan is such a Big Ten team and Alabama is such an SEC team. And the universe deserves that for a very prototypical Big Ten versus an SEC. So we could see um, how slow the Big Ten is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Last time was 38 nothing, uh, Alabama, Michigan State. So maybe oh, that's oh, not dear. a good thing after all. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I agree on Michigan's defense, Mike. I mean, I, I'd like to see that matchup, but. Clemson actually has an offense that has some chance to keep pace. I mean, I I still think it's Alabama, pretty big gap. Clemson, pretty big gap. Michigan and and then others behind them. But we will probably get to find that out. Speaking of that, now those are bowl games that, of course, we're very excited to see when they come about. There are many other bowl games, of course. Every year there's this debate of, you know, this bloated bowl picture. I mean, we've got like the, you know, like the – Poulon weed eater, you know, big boy, whatever bowl in, in some un- unknown locale. Uh, some people would like to see that cut down. On the other hand, 
hey, if Vandy and Tennessee didn't have a bowl game to play for right now, what would we be talking about? I guess basketball. So I put it to you guys. Does the bowl system need to be revamped? Are we way too bloated, or are you fine with how it is? Well, there's not really a good alternative right now. I mean, I don't think we're going to see a 32-team playoff or anything like that in the FBS. The the, the fact that we have 40 bowls, and I think we have 43 in in a couple years, they're adding three more for who knows why. Uh, But, you know, a lot of those bowls most people don't care about. But around Christmas, what are you going to watch on TV? Uh, you know, for these, for a lot of these schools, these bowls don't matter. But I've covered the Sun Belt and Conference USA, and those lower tier bowls that the SEC and Big Ten can kind of, you know, roll their eyes at. Teams like that, that's that's as good as it gets. And so the bowls will be around. Now, they're going to be around as long as hotel rooms can be filled and restaurants, and as long as they can fill a spot on ESPN, you know, t- TV and. Uh, you know, local economy stuff. That's what drives us bowls, and that's going to be around for a long time. Adam, you watch the NBA at Christmas. That's what you watch around Ugh. Christmas time. That's Ugh. a fun league. That's where you tune into. No, I think there are too many bowls. As in our profession, no, I don't want to spend Christmas in Shreveport, Louisiana in an average bowl game. I did I mean, there, that, though. I had to do that. <laughs> that was a shout-out to you, Adam. Yeah. Um, there, there are too many. But I think one of the most important things here comes from the football program standpoint. And it goes back to something Jeremy Pruitt said this morning. If they got to 5-7 and seven and did have an APR score to get in a bowl game, he'd take it. They have a young team and a team that needs those 15 practices. That's something that's valuable. And unless the bowl, if the bowl system dropped down games, they need to find a way to maybe make that up for those teams that need those practices because that's the reward as much as anything for these teams It is an opportunity to get better, those extra practices before spring football. And that's valuable to a program, especially when you look at a young, average team like Tennessee. Guys, the answer is never less college football. It's always more college football. <clears throat> and look, Mike, I try to have an open mind, but Adam got you on Clemson versus Michigan. That, that stat not, was brutal. Sorry. I knew I was done as soon as he dropped the stat. That's right. I do my, <laughs> I do my homework. All right. Well, Mike will have more chances. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. We'll be back next week on On the Line.